Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and in this tutorial we're going to look at how to detect when the surface, the drawing surface, is created or destroyed. And the reason we need to do that is we're going to move on to drawing frequently and regularly to the surface um, because we need to do frame by frame animation and we, we don't want to have it that we're drawing to the surface when it's not there for one reason because you need to make sure that your application is not active when it's not visible to the user so you don't want to be trying to update a surface or draw stuff when it's not visible and another reason is that if you try to draw to a surface that isn't actually there then of course you're going to have problems now one way we, we could try to deal with this problem is in the activity we could override the um, on pause and on resume events because on pause is called whenever the application is going into the background for some reason either because it's being literally just going into the background or because it's being destroyed and on resume is always called when the application starts whether it's starting for the first time or it's just being brought back into the foreground again but um, for our purposes here it's better to actually detect when this surface here is actually being created and destroyed because that is a real clincher here and we, we never want to try drawing to the surface when it's not there and when it is there then it means the application's visible and we can certainly try drawing to it so we're not going to use on pause or on resume here what we're going to do is actually look at the behavior of the surface itself and to do that I'm going to go into my game view which extends surface view and I'm going to say here um, set callback no not add callback um, set on hmm yeah I've actually completely forgotten is it set callback listener or add callback listener you know what I think it's get holder dot add callback that's the one so um, yeah now I remember um, we, we, we're actually to actually look at the behavior of the surface we, we have to deal with this surface holder and therefore it's the actual holder that we add a listener to so in fact let's, let's just copy this code here and what I'll do then is I can then say holder dot add callback and I'm just going to say add callback this and this expects something that implements surface holder dot callback so if I then click this error and go to let game view implement callback then that's going to say implements callback up here and hopefully it's added me a, a couple of methods in fact it hasn't but if I then click the error and then say add on implemented methods then we get down here these three methods so we've got this surface change which is called if your surface is resized and which you might want to pay attention to and I've got this surface created which is called when the surface is displayed and when your application goes into the background so it's not visible the surface will be destroyed and then later on of course it's created again and um, one thing I'm going to do here to simplify things a bit before I continue and while I remember is I'm going to go to my Android manifest and I'm going to go to the XML view and in this activity here so this is the activity that uses this surface I'm just going to do control space here and I'm going to set the screen orientation control space again to portrait because I don't want the user to switch into landscape mode because then I'd have to worry about dealing with that in my game and I'd rather they were just forced to turn the phone around to look at it uh, the right way um, which actually is going to be portrait mode anyway which is kind of how the phone will normally appear okay so we've we've got we've implemented these methods and now 
but uh, the only thing that I want to show you in this tutorial is how these actually work so I'm just going to say in here log.d and I'll supply a debug tag here and I'll just say changed and I'm just going to copy that and don't, that JWP is just my initials and let's put created in here and destroyed in here actually that's in the wrong place so I'll put that there and format it and let's just add the um, andrew.util.log and I hope this works because um, often I find the debug stops working and I have to restart Eclipse to get it to work again and I think once I actually had to restart my computer to get it to work again but uh, that seems quite incredible and maybe I imagined it but um, let's take a look so actually if we check the console here then it's installing and when it installs I'm just going to I just want to show you how how when these methods get called so you'll understand what they do and it's pretty straightforward so there's the application and I just want to go I'm just going to go to DDMS here and let's filter on that debug tag and you can see that we've got surface created and surface changed and it's the created one that I'm really interested in here because we're probably not going to do anything with the changed and there's my application and now I'm gonna just click on the kind of home screen button on my phone and we can see here that it's gone to the home screen and because the application's vanished the surface has been destroyed and if I look at the recent apps here and then go to my game again then it, again it says created and changed and um, once again whenever I go to the home screen or navigate away from it the surface is destroyed and I think if I bring up a menu in front of it I don't think anything happens so that's like a transparent menu and that doesn't seem to cause it to do anything so the bottom line is here that um, we're going to engineer the app in such a way that it runs a thread which will update the surface whenever it actually exists let me just tap it so that we get the on tap handler there we go and uh, whenever the surface goes away we're going to stop our thread doing stuff and we're going to stop drawing to it and it's really really important to get this stuff sorted out at the beginning because if you're not careful you'll end up constructing an application that will not respond well to things like uh, people navigating away from it or, or receiving a phone call while it's running and stuff like that so you have to make sure that um, or you know changing it into landscape mode although I've stopped at doing that you have to make sure that your application will handle all those kind of eventualities and I find even the examples that come with the latest Android SDK um, at least on my phone they seem to break if you go to your home screen when the application is running and it's worth ironing that out and nipping it in the bud at the start. So that's it for this tutorial and until next time, happy coding.